Halloween is quickly approaching and many aspiring witches and warlocks are dusting off their brooms and pointy hats, but many of them would be surprised to learn the link between a typical witch costume and medieval beer production. Hey, this is Ryan from Beer by the Numbers and today we're going to discover the hidden link between witches and beer. This image of a broom-wielding sorceress with a tall hat, a black cat, and a bubbling cauldron overflowing with potions has been synonymous with witches for the last century and probably even longer. The truth of the woman in this story takes us down a much different path altogether though. A path not about magic and mystery, but about money and politics. So if you've watched some of our beer history videos, you'll know that for thousands of years, beer brewing was a domestic task done primarily in the home by women. Alewives were women who opened their homes to sell the beer they made, and they also ran the rural taverns all across Europe in the medieval period. Now, if you take a look at the stereotypical garb of a witch, a cat, a pointed hat, a broom, and a bubbling cauldron, all of those are pieces of equipment that would have been essential for alewives. The bubbling cauldron is probably the easiest connection to make. After all, any brewer needs a huge bubbling vat to boil their wort as they make sweet, delicious beer. Next, let's look at those pointy witches' hats. Back in the height of women's fashion, the hat of choice for a lady who wanted to stand out was a henan. Hennens were conical hats that were often ornately decorated, and they stood up to two feet tall. These hats were insanely popular with the ladies in the royal courts of medieval Europe. Now, there weren't many ladies of the court out and about in the taverns, but alewives adopted these tall hats so they could stand out on crowded streets and in their own crowded taverns. Historians believe this was a pretty simple marketing scheme. It was much easier to sell more beer if people could easily identify you in a crowd. After all, any good business wants to make it as easy as possible to order the next round of beers. In another effort to promote sales, alewives would often place a broom, a symbol of domestic trade, in front of their home or their tavern. Even in modern day Peru, a stick adorned with a red bouquet or bag is a symbol placed outside the doorway to indicate that their ale is ready for consumption. Another symbol found outside the door was a talisman resembling a Star of David. The star was used to convey the purity of the beer. Remember, it was the Middle Ages. Plagues and other diseases were a constant concern. The six points on the star are said to symbolize the most important parts of brewing. Hops, grain, malt, yeast, water, and of course, the brewer. As for black cats as sidekicks, women of the time were heavily reliant on felines to protect their grain stores and their homes from vermin. In fact, most rural households relied on cats to keep the mice and rats at bay, but it was of particular importance for alewives who had large stores of grain on hand for brewing. For many centuries, women enjoyed the success and gained much respect as key drivers of the beer industry. But the winds of political change were brewing, and alewives became the target of pressure from religious officials. Now, we have to remember that at this time in history, politics and religion were really one and the same. Kings and queens received their right to rule not by a vote of the people, but by a divine right from God. Therefore, as interpreters of God's will, the church held a great amount of power and the opinions of the clergy held great sway within medieval society. The great influence of the church eventually corrupted into a rather great lust for power, and they sought to control, or at least the ability to greatly influence, all positions of power within European society. At a time when large bureaucratic male-dominated trade guilds were the norm, a large, decentralized, and woman-dominated industry was pretty much the opposite of what the church wanted. So what was the church gonna do? Traditionally, the church taught that witches were worshippers of the old and false pagan gods. Witches were said to be mischievous and not to be trusted, but they weren't inherently evil. 
It was more like witches would lead you down a path of false hope and away from the true God and Savior Jesus. However, in order to more effectively reduce the influence of alewives, the church began depicting witches as slaves of the devil. Witches were here on earth to do the devil's bidding and were actively working against the will of God. And how did witches spread evil throughout the world? Why by brewing potions and getting unsuspecting people to drink them, of course. I think you can see where this is going. Alewives were being associated with devil-worshipping bringers of evil in the world. As a result, many alewives were forced to close shop, and even more disturbing, some of them were accused of witchcraft proper. It was a pretty dark time for the church. Many women were tried for witchcraft, and almost all of them who were found guilty were executed once accused. Uh, the sentence was typically death, especially during the particularly brutal crackdowns like the Spanish Inquisition. Now, that's not to say all churches across all of Europe were executing women who brewed beer, but over several generations and hundreds of years, many different groups of men managed to use religious authority in one way or another to get women to close up shop. Then, larger, centralized, and male-dominated breweries popped up in society to fill the void. This didn't happen just to brewing, it happened across many, many industries throughout the Middle Ages. Regardless, the old symbols of alewives are now associated with those evil witches. Pointy hats, black cats, brooms, bubbling cauldrons, all of them are now associated with evil tricksters as opposed to professional homebrewers. So there you go, beer nerds. Now you know the secret history of witch symbolism and how it very closely relates to beer. What do you think of this crazy beer conspiracy? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button down below. Once again, this has been Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and I'll see you in the next video.